good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. thought I'd run through a little utility that I've been using in a lot of my classes called Path Test. And, uh, we'll see what you think of it. Enjoy. So what is it? Uh, Path Test is a throughput generation tool, much like iPerf. It just runs in memory. We like that, so that way our disk is not involved within the throughput testing process. And where can you get it? You can go to testmypath.com and I've got that web page up right here and what they've done is uh, put up a little comparison between path test and iperf I'm going to point out a few things that I like uh, first thing I noticed was this is in fact true the accuracy when you use path test uh, it seems to be much more accurate and uh, more able to generate traffic on gig links where iperf uh, seems to be a little more hit and miss for some reason and they claim it's got a lot to do with uh, side and, and uh, stuff, stuff like that we, we don't need to get into that uh, the other one is bandwidth control. Uh, iPerf can do bandwidth control, um, but only for UDP, not TCP. So this is uh, kind of nice for that as well. And you can actually do bandwidth control for all protocols. Uh, as far as ICMP goes, just a little note, you'll need administrator access to your command prompt for all you Windows people. Uh, otherwise, you can't do ICMP tests. The other thing that we use is um, QoS testing. Can't do that so well with iPerf. Uh, so we can do that with path test. There's something here that uh, is not mentioned, which is kind of related to all this, and that's packet size. So instead of sending a 1500 byte packet, you can send a 256 byte packet to illustrate throughput differences when packet sizes are not optimal. The other one is omnidirectional, one-way tests. Uh, you can do um, download, upload, both. You can do simultaneous. That's kind of the same as um, iperf. And that's that's pretty well it. We'll, we'll just get into some of the basic stuff here in the slides. So the first thing about the slides uh, before I get into this is uh, I'll make these uh, power well I'll make a PDF of all the PowerPoint slides available for download on my website, and I will provide a URL at the end of the uh, presentation. That way you can go get it. And all I have to do is update a PDF if I find anything new and wonderful to add to it. Syntax a lot like iperf. There's a dash s for the server and a dash c for the client. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. We're going to cover just some of the basics. I've created this uh, client options reference sheet uh, for people who like to just print the stuff off and have a reference. That's what I like to do, and that way you can reference the stuff fairly quickly when you need to do several options. Now, the thing that I found that was a little odd was the options not consistent. So for example, uh, dash C's client, great, uh, but then down here you've got dash P or dash dash port. Uh, so sometimes uh, there's only the dash dash available like ICMP and sometimes only uh, the dash C. So it's just a little, little notation more than anything. It's, it's not the end of the world but uh, worth noting. Server options, we've got our server uh, op option obviously dash S and the control port. We'll talk about the control port very soon. So basic operation, here's all the defaults, just so I don't keep saying default, default, default. Protocol UDP, port number is 3236. Bandwidth is max. Direction is an upload from client to server. No QoS, and the IP MTU or packet size is set to the maximum, whatever the default is for that system. Transmit receive window or buffer sizes is 365K for UDP or TCP. So these are all the defaults, and, and obviously you can override and change all of these. On the server side, we've got a path test dash S, good to go. And on the client side, we're going to do a path test dash C, which means I'm in client mode, and then the IP address or name of the server that we set up on this side. Okay. When I put this together, uh, I wanted to make sure that I kept it fairly current. So I've got the client and the server on a machine that has Windows 7 on it. Uh, premium, ultimate, doesn't that doesn't matter much. I also had Wireshark running and I didn't want to have to worry about mirroring ports or taps and all that kind of nonsense so I have Wireshark on the client PC so if I wanted to validate any tests to make sure it actually does uh, what it advertises to do then I can do that fairly easily from the client machine. Interesting thing about this program is when you run a test iperf just runs the test that you want it to do whereas path tests does this little thing at the beginning. It's it's kind of, um, I called it administration or an out of band conversation where at the beginning of the conversation um, the client sends to the server what it wants to do and sends the test parameters to the server. Uh, after looking at this a little closely I found that these are just HTTP 
or HTML type uh, packets. So in Wireshark, I just did a decode as 3236, same as HTTP. And now I'm able to see this conversation quite clearly. Even in this example, you can see that the test parameters are being sent in packet 5, and there's little stuff going on. But then all of a sudden, we're at packet 4600, and you see the results being posted. So this is how it does its thing, which is a, a bit of a, not a concern, but just worth knowing only because if this control port can't get through, uh, I can imagine that it would probably have issues. One of the parameters that you can use on the client side is to change this port number as well as the test port number. So if you want them both to go over port 80, for example, you can do that. I noted that the agent uh, information is ANI underscore net test. Uh, that's good to know. So if you were filtering and you saw this agent, at least you'd know that it's an HTTP client within the path test uh, stuff. All right. Most common stuff we use, dash B or dash dash. I know it looks like one big one, but it, there's a double dash there. Bandwidth. We can use it for TCP or UDP mode uh, or ICMP. We can use uh, M for million, K for kilo, or G for gigabit, and we can run our tests accordingly. Okay. So, for example, in this test, I did a path test to Johnny, which is uh, my server, dash B 100K and TCP mode. And you can see here is 143K total throughput. So, pretty good. Next, bidirectional. And what this does is does an up and it does a down. And in this case, I had no bandwidth parameters. And this is over my wireless link. So it's always interesting to see how well wireless works. And you can see seven up and three down. Okay. TCP option. This one's a, a favorite of most of my students uh, because in many cases you want to test for um, uh, packet shaping if it's port based or some kind of access list or filter. So this is a great way to find out um, if A, you can get through or not, if you have a filter. But then secondarily, if you do get through, does that port number or protocol filtered out? So in this case, we changed, uh, you can change it to whatever you want. Okay. Next, packet size. This is the last one I'm going to cover. And packet size obviously allows you to change the packet size. In this case, I chose 898, just a random number. Just threw it in there, and you can see it's referenced over here now, 898. And that's, that's it for now. That's good enough. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this presentation in a PDF format, throw it on my server, and you can go take, uh, take the current copy whenever you need it. The only thing that I, I really wish the, the app would do is have the ability to log this stuff in some kind of log file format, like comma separated or something like that. I find uh, just trying to take this stuff out of the output uh, gets to be quite arduous, and, uh, and maybe that'll be a good topic of how to... Uh, take this stuff out using the Microsoft pipe find command as I've done with other tools. That's it. Hope it helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.